As a business owner, it is all exciting being your own boss. However, it can have its downside and you can feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. At the end of the day, all the responsibility is down to you. How are you dealing with that? Are you feeling the pressure? Can you identify when you are stressed? Keep with me as this video will be useful to help you manage stress better. Your health and well-being is so important. With the pressure of the day-to-day -day running of the business and its long-term success falls all down to you. And with this, the stress can build up very quickly. Everyone is stressed by different things, but some of the common areas that people get most stressed about is things like workload, long working hours, and business finances and cash flow. Have you ever lost sleep? had muscle tension, or experienced a lot of headaches and haven't felt just quite right? Well, this is often the first main signs of stress. The point of where stress becomes non-productive can vary for many people. This is crucial to identify as can lead to serious illnesses, but please look out for these common signs of being unable to stop worrying, difficulty concentrating, withdrawal from friends and family, feeling unable to cope and relying on alcohol and a change in appetite. These feelings can then overcome everything within your life and not just your work. If you cannot identify the signs of stress very early on, this can be detrimental to your long-term health and well-being. This can lead to you having time off work through insomnia, development of obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, and even depression. We are in a world of information and work overload, as well as sugar, alcohol, and sitting down all day overload. The World Health Organization has stated that we are in a serious stress epidemic. It is recorded that 80% of GP appointments are due to stress-related illnesses. If you identify these at any point, then it's best to try and nip this in the bud quite quickly. So a coping mechanism needs to be addressed in order to resolve the issue before it happens. In order to manage the stress, various factors need to be identified and these can be tackled in many different ways. But please make your own health and wellbeing your main priority before anything else. Now, most people think that running a business is a given. It will always be stressful. However, there are so many ways to alleviate the stress as much as possible. Just remember, we will never rid ourselves completely of stress, particularly in today's world. Now, firstly, it is very important to identify what is going well. Draw on the positives before thinking about the negatives. It is very difficult to identify the positives as more often than not, when you're in a stress mindset, you can only think of the negatives. So take a step back, breathe and think happy. You can take a mental list of these items or write a list of these. What I often find if you write the list down, it is a visual and the positives seem more real than just thinking up of a mental list. Your brain tends to keep you in your familiar routines. It goes into hyperdrive with triggering you to think about all the things that will go wrong, might have already gone wrong, could go wrong, and how you will fix this. When stressed, your brain tells you to be vigilant. Now by adopting this new approach, your perspective is likely to change and the feeling of some accomplishment of actually achieving something and taking stock will keep the stress levels lower it keeps your mind in the present and focuses on good things. Now identify your stressors. This is very key to managing your stress levels. As if you can identify what your main stressors are, this will enable you to identify various areas in which things may need to change. Just identifying these stressors sometimes can even alleviate the stress for you. 
dependent on the area, will depend on what method you take to try and overcome these. Self-awareness will be key here, as everyone is different. So one stress area could be a problem for one person, but not for you. Mindful techniques is definitely something to be aware of here as well. And even something simple like writing a journal or writing down an emotion of how you feel of undergoing that work or home task. This may help you identify areas that do stress you out, but you wouldn't normally realise within your day. Analyse these, as some results may surprise you. And if they are tasks you can possibly avoid doing, why do them if they stress you? Have you ever thought, I'm not the only business owner out there? Well, you are not, and I'm sure that you know many other business owners. It's good to talk, and it is encouraged and everyone has been in the same boat at some point with stress levels. Why not ask other business owners what stresses they have come across and how they will overcome them? Stress and wellbeing is not a taboo subject anymore. In more recent years, it is a subject that is well covered and well discussed. Remember, what works for one person may not work for you. Try and adopt a strategic approach. Short-term issues like bottlenecks, for example, if you have too much work to do with time constraints, you can deal with that by having a strategic approach. Even by a simple process of managing client expectations, drafting in more resources in order to meet your targets. If you take a longer view approach to your workload, avoid overcommitting to work in order to try and meet everyone's expectations that might not be the same as your own expectations. Perhaps think of tasks that you're undergoing yourself that you could potentially delegate out to others. For instance, a marketing expert, or sometimes the dreaded task like the bookkeeping. Hire someone else to do this task to free up time for what you really want to concentrate on. These specialise in the areas they are trained in and can complete these tasks far more efficient than you could, saving you time and stress in the meantime. Various softwares are meant to make your life easier and there are vast resources of these available on the internet. However, if you have time, identify which apps or tools could be useful for you. Trial them and see if it saves you time, as the last thing you want to do is work on these apps and you end up spending more time on working out how these operate and waste more time and saves you in the long run. Do you have project management tools? These can be very useful for you become more organised by streamlining work processes and assist in keeping track of your workload. Don't treat your business as it is your entire life. Make sure when you're at work, you're at work, and when you're at home, you're at home. In home life, don't keep checking emails. Detach yourself from work if you can. Don't let it be that the first thing in the morning or the last thing at night you are checking your work emails. Try taking regular breaks throughout the work and day. This gives you a better position to step away from the situation and regain control of your mind and helps rebuild your energy levels. Even a little tea break away from screens, small walk, or just making sure you take the lunch break you should have can really help your mental well-being. Or even if you have room, create a quiet area in your work environment that has a complete no screens policy and chill out for a period of time. I was struggling to switch off in the evenings, so I now have set up the do not disturb function on my phone between certain hours of the day, so I no longer have work notifications and calls interrupting my own personal time. As in today's world, technology makes us accessible 24 hours a day, but it doesn't mean we have to adhere to being available 24 hours a day. I have found this much easier to be able to manage screen time, etc., and to switch off and enjoy my evenings more. Now, be okay with saying no. As a business owner, you go into the process thinking you have to say yes to everything, whether that is to your customers, suppliers, other fellow business owners, or indeed the team if you have one working around you. The thought process is if you say yes to everything, you are not letting anyone down. But yes, you are, yourself. By saying yes, you're ensuring that you are taking on too many projects and tasks without focusing on the key areas required which will make your business suffer in the long run. Try adopting a different kind of yes 
by maintaining a different perspective and focus in on setting achievable deadlines to be met. You can start with just asking yourself these questions before saying yes to a request. Is this something I want to do? Do I have time to do this? Is it important? Will it fit into my schedule? By asking these questions first will help you identify the response you would want to give. But setting yourself up into a time trap of agreeing to too many tasks can be a stress trap. Prioritise self-care. This is crucial as within your work and life, as more often than not with startups and small businesses, you are the main element within that business. What use are you to your business or to your loved ones when you haven't taken care of yourself or you've had a burnout and cannot function? I have been listening to a free audiobook through Audible by Brendan Bouchard called The Six Habits of Growth, which I have put the link below for you. This highlights the best route to self-care and a better you. He refers to having daily meds. No, this doesn't mean taking your daily medication. M is for meditation. The benefits of meditation lower stress and anxiety and assist people with being more focused. This allows you to increase your mental lives, spiritually and psychologically. You will feel refreshed and renewed. We've tried this as a lunchtime activity in the office at Cunningham's for the team, and it definitely did help us to become less stressed and far more calmer and focused afterwards. I'll be introducing a video in the future going into more detail in meditation. E is for exercise. Find the best strategy you can for this stage of your life and what activity is best for you to get active. Whether that may be just a daily walk to raise your heart rate a little, or two CrossFit sessions, two cardio sessions, and three days of walking. Make sure you plan something that is sustainable for you. Don't wait until 1st of January to sort your exercise regime out. Do it so it's a sustainable part of your routine. Even if you just make yourself do a 30 minute walk every day, it's better than sitting on your bum all day. D is for diet. You could be eating really well and healthy and still feeling unwell. He suggests going to see a nutritionist and making sure you have the right diet for you, as everyone is different due to age, hormones set up, weight, etc. Spend the money to see one rather than spending money on gimmicks throughout the year. Work out what diet is right for you. Having deficiencies of vitamins, low on hormones, or problems with your blood work, etc., can have severe effects on your mindset and will affect your productivity, as you could be eating things that are poisoning your body. If you're constantly fatigued and not feeling well, this could uncover a new eating plan to make you feel better. As your brain and stomach is connected, whatever you are putting in your stomach affects your brain as well. S is for sleep. Most people at some point suffer with lack of sleep. He suggests that you get into a rhythm when you go to sleep and when you get up. That's 60% of the battle. Stick to it. Have a wind down to sleep. That's 20% of the battle. What do you do in the three hours before bed? This is three, two, one. Three hours before bed, no food. Two hours before bed, no work. One hour before bed, no screens. The other 20% of the battle is when you wake up and get into a routine. Aside from the suggestions from Brendan, you could just make sure that you start introducing a small part of your day for things that you enjoy doing that you think gives you the headspace you need, but you've not made them a priority to carry them out. This could just mean taking that walk in the fresh air, listen to some music that helps lift your spirits, go into that gym class, taking up that hobby again, or even just the meditation. There are so many different solutions and strategies that you could implement in order to manage your stress levels better and far more different resources that I have read or listened to that adopt different approaches which would involve far longer in-depth discussion on, which may involve more videos in the future. Now I hope you've enjoyed the video and have found some new ways of managing your stress levels. If you did, we'd really appreciate if you could click the like button below and if you want to see more of our videos, please do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified whenever we release a new video. It really helps us to know that you like what we're doing 
and tell YouTube that other people could also benefit from this video. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has been useful to you. And don't forget to leave a comment about a key change that you have managed to make to reduce your stress levels. And remember, sometimes just one thing is all it takes. See you soon.